Hello and welcome back to a beautiful day here in Japan. Today we're in the backyard. We're gonna be taking a look at some of the rice fish. It's awesome right now. The weather is amazing. You can see some of the trees are starting to turn an orange color. Really beautiful. But today, however, we are going to talk about how to care for Japanese rice fish, also known as medaka. So let's get straight into this. So out here in my aunt and uncle's backyard, we have six mini ponds or patio ponds, patio bowls, whatever you call them. We've got one, two, three, four small little bowls right here. We've got one here and then another one here. So that's six. And then we've got this extra one. I don't really count this because it's just water hyacinth and I don't know. We're, we're just basically growing water hyacinth in there. For tank size or pond size, these fish can go into really small little containers. Look, look at this. This one, I think maybe around three gallons. Um, I've never measured, so I'm not quite sure. But as long as the water is kept clean, you can see they'll really thrive and they'll breed like crazy. And we'll go into breeding a bit later. But yeah, if I recommend keeping them outdoors in ponds because they just seem to do much better. I've kept them in tanks before, but they seem to be weaker and I think it might be the sun. They do like natural sunlight, so if you have the chance to keep them outdoors, definitely do so. Now you've probably noticed, but we don't put any lids on our rice fish ponds and that's because we've just never had any issues with the rice fish ever jumping out but I have heard of people saying that multiple of their rice fish have jumped out so if you guys are afraid um, definitely go and put a lid on there but for us you can see they just do pretty well I think the floating plants help a lot um, with keeping them feeling more secure and yeah, so try to have as many plants as possible. Now for water parameters, these fish are crazy hardy and they will live through it just about anything. They're probably the hardiest fish that I know of. I'd say for pH, aim for around 6.5 to 8.5. They'll be just fine around there. For temperature, I'd say go around 16 to 25 degrees Celsius. You can go much higher than that, but that kind of shortens their lifespan a little bit. And of course, you can go much colder than 16 degrees Celsius as well. We leave our mini ponds out here all throughout the year and we have freezing temperatures during the winter and I've mentioned this in many of my videos before but the surface of the pond will freeze and the rice fish are just fine they will be a little bit lethargic during the winter time because it's cold and they will eat much less but they're just like koi they can live through the winters and you don't really have to be worried about them. Of course, you can bring them inside and heat them up if you want, um, but for our case, we just leave them out here and they're perfectly fine. And for food, these fish will eat just about anything. In the wild, they'll eat small insects and worms and stuff like that, but here we just give them pellets. We've got this little pellet that we get from a pet store. This is made just for rice fish and they go crazy over this stuff. Check that out. Let's give some to these guys as well. So this is how my uncle keeps his pellets in these ear q-tip containers. Here, these, these guys are a little bit shy but they're beautiful. Look at them. You can see small ones as well. Some that we hatched out this year. Let's give some to these guys. These ones are a little bit smaller too. And then some babies. Yeah, you can see this is beautiful. So this here is actually just a wabikusa that I placed in. I set this up during the summer. And it's grown this much so kind of crazy but kind of cool how much it's grown and you can see the fish are loving it
check out how many there are in this. And you can see, it's not a ginormous pond. But because there's so many plants in here, the plants are acting as a filter and we can keep this many fish without having a filter and without having to do water changes. So another thing I forgot to mention, we don't really do water changes on these ponds. We just top up the water and it's really stable. We don't get much algae growth. Um, but yeah, it's just, once you find the right balance, you see, you get flowers blooming and everything will be really nice. I don't know, I don't know what more to say, but yeah, let's give these guys some more. Look at that. And of course, we've got to give some to this one as well. Uh, these guys are also a little bit shy, but, oh look, you can see some already out and about. This one's a bit deeper. It's actually one of these, um, except this one has holes. These are actually chairs, which you sit on, have coffee, and then they have this special one, which is actually made for rice fish. You can see those ones have the holes on the sides and the bottom. But this one actually doesn't have any of that. And that's because rice fish, as many of you know, is very common in Japan and many people keep them as pets. So they make these special pots or bowls for rice fish. Japanese rice fish can be kept with other small and peaceful fish such as white cloud mountain minnows, Brigitte rasboras, green neon tetras, celestial pearl daniels, and other small fish, but I would rather keep them alone because you just get so much more fun um, watching them swim around and breed. Breeding is, I think, one of the big things. I think something that many people are interested in doing and especially because these fish aren't as common around the world as they are in Japan. I think breeding them would be like something everyone should try. Shrimp and snails are also another good tank mate. Now let's talk about breeding because breeding them is super super easy. These rice fish in these ponds breed every single year and during the breeding time which is around summer, late spring and summer, they will breed every single day. They, By breed every single day I mean they lay eggs every single day and you get babies like almost daily. And this year, we had a ton of babies. Some of you might remember that we had a styrofoam box here full of little babies swimming around, and we gave a lot of them away to our friends. All you need are some floating plants and a bunch of hiding spots like this for all the fry to swim in. Water hyacinth is a great plant because the, the eggs of the rice fish will stick on to the roots of the water hyacinth, you can see here, and you'll get eggs. Right now, are there any eggs? No, there aren't eggs, but yeah, it's not breeding season anymore, so. It's the same thing if you're gonna try to breed them in a tank. Just make sure you have a bunch of plants, especially floating plants with roots, because the little babies will hide in there. The parents will lay the eggs in the roots. Um, so yeah, just, just, just have a lot of plants. And you can have gravel in there if you want, decorate it a little bit, but yeah, just keep the water clean. And lots of plants. Now let's talk a little bit about how much Japanese rice fish cost. I can't say much for other countries because I've never seen the prices there but for Japan regular red white and black ones like some of the ones you see in here you can get them anywhere from a few cents to a couple of dollars. This one too this is just a regular black one but they're one of my favorites they look incredible. Look at them they look they might be wild but I'm not sure. These are probably my favorite ones. So yeah, the ones that are in here, when we first started, we got like a group of 10 mixed rice fish, red, white, and black, for a mixed group of 10 of them for about 4 US dollars. So really cheap, but they did come in quite small. And as you can see, they've grown a lot and they've reproduced a lot. Here you can kind of see like a hybrid. It's red with black markings. So 
Um, yeah, you can get hybrids out of these and now let's talk a little bit just a tiny little bit about some of the rarer and more expensive types of Japanese rice fish if you got if you've got that expensive taste. I'm not a huge expert on this. I don't know much about those um, rarer types of rice fish so I can't really say much but I do know a tiny little bit. You've got the tricolor sanshoku which is my absolute favorite. Three colors kind of like a koi fish. You've got red, black and white those three colors in one little Japanese rice fish. It's really cute, really amazing, but I've heard it's pretty hard to breed because they don't breed true. So every time you breed them, they end up being a little bit different and they kind of lose the tricolor. Again, I don't know a whole ton about them, but I've heard that it's pretty difficult to breed the tricolor sanshoku. And then you've got the blue Miyuki rice fish, which is kind of like a glittery blue color. Uh, not so sure, but they are pretty beautiful. You've got the jet blacks, the, like a really dark, kind of like melanistic, but super beautiful and incredible fish. If you put it in a white tank, they stay black and it's, it's a striking black appearance. And then similar to the jet blacks, you've got like a, a stunning red, red orange color rice fish. The full body, the fins, everything is a red orange color. I've seen that fish in person and it's pretty pretty amazing and I would love to keep one of those too. Hopefully sometime in the future I can keep some of these rare ones and try to breed them. Uh, it's gonna take quite some time and effort. Gotta gotta really be motivated to do that so maybe sometime in the future we'll be seeing some of that and also I do want to do a farm tour. There's a Japanese rice fish breeder quite nearby me who breeds a ton of rice fish. He's got a whole farm and I would love to do like a tour of his place. Maybe if you guys are interested in that, give this video a thumbs up and let me know. Now finally, I want to show you my own mini pond that's been running for a year now. I kind of want to upgrade this to a bigger one, uh, maybe soon in the future, but you can see the rice fish are still in here. There's a couple of them. There used to be more, but I gave quite a number of them to Aqua Review, my local fish store, because they were doing a display tank with rice fish, and I just donated some because he wanted some, so now some of my rice fish are at the store. But yeah, you can see here, they're doing really well. Uh, slowing down a bit, here's a nice black one. But yeah, it's getting colder, so they're gonna start slowing down a little bit and this is the bucket where it's the water top-up bucket so whenever the water level gets low in here I just get this and kind of fill it back up like that and I don't dechlorinate this I just let it sit for a day or two and the chlorines will evaporate out so as always, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Like squad, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you're new to this channel for more videos like this. Check out the beautiful color on the leaves of this tree. I'll see you guys next time.